Um, please forgive me if I'm a little bit emotional during this. It's been, um, speaking amongst friends, it's been a horrible few months. Uh, 2020 really is the year that keeps on giving. Um, I'm aware as I look at grief that it's like a mountain and that I am painfully towards the bottom of it. Um, but it is through actually tributes like this and through connecting with people and through the knowledge of carrying on his legacy that I think I, I personally will be able to climb the mountain. Um, my father was a remarkable man, which I know is what you're supposed to say, but in his case is absolutely true. Um, he was kind. He was incredibly good, he was good hearted. Um, he was funny, as you know, and he was so wise, even in his last days, he was imparting wisdom that have kept me strong over the past few months since he hasn't been here. Um, I was often asked, I am often asked what he was like in real life. And the truth is, as Kanya mentioned, he was exactly the same in person as he was on stage because the man on stage wasn't a carefully curated alter ego or an act. It was him. He was the same at the breakfast table as he was on stage. The, um, the response that we had when we announced his death from people all around the world was um, overwhelming in a good way at a very difficult time. But quite aside from the, res the, the amount of responses we had, something stood out to me, which was people from all over the world shared stories about meeting him, whether they met him um, at an event, at a book signing, or if they met him at the airport or bumped into him. They met him and he made them feel like they were the only person in the room. And it's the kind of thing that if he'd been around to see those messages and we wished so much that he was, but he would have remembered the person who'd left the message and he would have remembered the story of how they met. And he would have because to him in that moment, they were the only person in the room. You know, it wasn't, it again, it wasn't an act. Um, he genuinely, truly cared about people. He cared, he was interested. He cared about people's stories about who they were and why they were that way, what they were doing, you know, what their parent or their dog thought of what they were doing. And he remembered every story. And I think there's, well, it's just worth pausing on that for a second because it's such a rare feat, I think, to have created such a platform like he did and to have had such an impact the way he did um, on authenticity, on, on, on being sincere. You know, the reason his message spread was, of course, because of his message, of what he said. But it was also, I think, because of how he said it, because of who he was in, in saying it, that it resonated the way that he did. Um, in processing my grief and in working on his legacy, which is what I would like to talk to you about today, I've been rereading his books and his early work and his writing. And um, there's a huge comfort in that. It's, you know, he wrote in the same way he spoke. So it's like hearing his voice all the time. Um, but what really struck me when I was reading it, quite aside from actually just how long he has been, you know, he fought for the things that he believed in. I was reading reports that came out in the early 80s, you know, that are painfully relevant to do with uh, the importance of arts education, that are painfully relevant to today. But what, what overwhelmed me when I was reading it was just his love for, for humanity, his love for our potential as a species, for our creative capacities. Um, I really believe that he saw the best in humanity and he wanted the best for humanity at his core. His message was a rallying cry for us to live up to our greatest potential. And I think we will need those more than ever. The, you know, his, his death was um, well, incredibly sad for a number of reasons, certainly for me personally and for my family, but I think globally, because there was, it, there has never been a more important time in modern history and living history for his message. Um, you know, I think we've been building up to, to the point in history that we're at for a long time. We've been sleepwalking past warning signs of, um, you know, breakdowns and suicide rates and toxic systems that we take for granted because we've always done things that way. And even before the pandemic, 
we were coming up to a crossroads, but certainly in light of the pandemic, we have found ourselves as an international community really at the crossroads. Um, and as we face not only you know the duration of this pandemic and how long it may go on for, but certainly the impact it will have, we will need our creative capacity more than ever. There was a quote that I read recently, one of the amazing things uh, from the tributes is there've been all these quotes that he said that people have been sharing that I had missed or that just seemed so appropriate. But one of them was, um, the more complex the world becomes, the more creative we need to be to meet its challenges. And certainly the world is very complex at the moment. The good thing is that we do have these creative capacities. We do have our human potential. It's what dad said, what he wrote, um, separated us from the rest of the life on earth. That, you know, in many ways we were similar to life on earth, but we, unlike the rest of life on earth, we have these incredible powers of imagination that we create the reality in which we live, that we create, that we collaborate. Um, other animals, other species on earth don't have elaborate language systems the way that we do. They don't create works of art or musical symphonies. They don't have elaborate democratic systems like the ones currently being tested in the US. Uh, that's that's what we do as humanity. Our, our time on earth has never been static and it's evolved not just because of external influences the way that other species evolve, but because of the systems and the cultures that we create and that we put in place. You know, we truly create the realities in which we live. Um, he would say, and actually you saw that in, in the video interview uh, that we did in Los Angeles with 100, which um, actually was the only time I got to interview him. And uh, quite aside from that story of the memory card, um, we, we kept trying not to giggle <laughs> the whole way through because we'd never sat like that, just facing each other, having a conversation, him on camera and me off camera. And so it's one of my happiest memories that day. But he said in that video that, you know, education is a human system, that if you are a part of the system, then you are the system. Um, and I know Dido referenced that as well, which means that it can be changed. It's not easy to change it, but as a human system, it can evolve to suit the needs of the world that it is designed to serve. So certainly as we're at this, this turning point, I believe, I know he believed in human history, but his work wasn't finished. Um, his death was sudden and unexpected and he wasn't finished. Um, his work still isn't finished. And um, in his final days, I promised him that I would dedicate the rest of my life to his memory, uh, to his legacy. And um, I meant it. And I, I know you've heard, uh, we've heard, you know, from from 100 and from Passi and from Kanya and Dido, I know that I'm not alone in carrying out his legacy. I know that, well, for starters, his legacy was his. He, he built an incredible legacy whilst he was still with us. And it's a human legacy. It's international, it's dedicated, it's passionate, it's committed. Um, and what I would like to ask you today is if you would join me in carrying on his legacy. We have so much work to do. Um, he used to say, and actually I'd recommend you check out his Unite talk that he did, his Call to Unite talk, which actually was an initiative that Kanye was involved with. But he used to say that great farmers know that to get the best results, you focus on the soil, not on the plant. They get the conditions right. And he used to say that if you get the conditions right in education, miracles happen. And if you call it a miracle, it sounds like it, it's a rare thing, but actually in education, miracles happen every single day. Um, I believe that's actually at the core of what 100 does. It creates the conditions for miracles to happen. It connects, it connects people, um, innovate, and it, it, it connects innovations. Um, it connects the community of those of us who believed in dad. If he, if anything he said resonated with you, if he lit a spark inside of you, um, the way you certainly did for me, then we have a duty, I believe, to carry that spark and light it in somebody else and raise his light and his message higher. He would say, and he did say, that um, you know, he wasn't alone in this either, that his work was was built on the work of other people and he took it and built on it and adapted it to its time and spread it with the word where with the world. And that I believe at the moment is our job and our responsibility, and it is the best way that we can honor him. Um 
I'm going to share, I'll ask us, lastly, if it's okay, I will ask you to um, share with everybody in the 100 community an email address for how you can keep in touch. Um, it's easy, it's skr at nevergray.org. Um, but you can email me there and I would love, as I go through these next few months, trying to figure out what life means without him um, and how best to carry on his legacy, I would love to be in touch with the people um, in this community and you know, in, in the wider community around the world to figure out how together we can we can best serve his legacy. And there are projects that we're working on. Um, there are projects I was working on with him that I'm determined to finish in his name. But then I think, um, you know, much as I'm at the bottom of a mountain of grief, we as humanity are at the bottom of a, of a mountain of collected grief, certainly at, at the, um, you know, the activities and the things that have happened this year. But I think also, in, as I said, in the, the things that have led us to this point um, as humanity. And the best way that we can honor dad is to carry his message forward and to create a new reality, to create, to take this opportunity to pause and reset and to create a reality that we're proud to hand over to our children. Um, so thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for, um, for believing in him and for supporting us. And I think together we can make sure that he's never forgotten. Thank you.